An extra $600 a week for unemployment benefits is about to run out. So what are lawmakers doing in Washington to extend the COVID-19 stimulus relief package? Joining us live from D.C. is Congressman Dr. Raul Ruiz. Doctor, it's always good to see you. Is there movement on extending the COVID-19 relief bill for the unemployed? There is. Well, there's movement in the Senate in the fact that they're meeting with the president to discuss another aid package. And the House already did its job. They passed the HEROES Act, which would extend the 600 extra week benefit in unemployment insurance, help counties and cities uh, be able to pay their employees. Uh, and so what we need to do is to take advantage of this window of opportunity to really pressure the Senator McConnell and the White House to include uh, the $600 a, a week for the unemployment uh, insurance. I, I signed a letter uh, along with many other colleagues of mine urging the president to not allow the American people who have lost their jobs to fall over the uh, unemployment cliff. Is there any doubt that it will not be passed? Uh, you know, of course, there's there's always good. It's going to be an uphill battle, but we're going to make sure that we provide stimulus checks for families and uh, that we extend the unemployment insurance for those that are struggling, that we help small businesses and that we give the our local cities the resources they need to be able to keep their employees and to provide the services that they provide for their residents. So will this be a stimulus package much like the very first one to help businesses? And as you mentioned, sending checks out to families? Yes, in addition to that, we are going to fight like hell to get more money for testing and contact tracing so that when we stop this surge, we have the safeguards in place before we start to uh, to expect, remove stay-at-home orders or closures in, in businesses so that we can uh, contain the virus during the fall and the winter and not overburden our health care system. Now, you have been uh, saying that wearing a mask is a, a patriotic duty. Now the president uh, is hearing you or hearing everyone else. He's now wearing one. What changed his mind? Well, you know, I think his polls changed his mind, quite honestly. Uh, and I think that it's a, it's a mixed baggage. One day he says one thing, but, you know, we got to see him uh, when he's out in public and with uh, other people near him. Because it's, it's one thing to say, it's one thing to do. He's now starting to say, so now I encourage him to continue to do that. He said recently that it is a patriotic duty. And I'm hoping that all those that have been following him and have been diminishing the importance of wearing a mask now realize that he's also coming around to the science and the data that wearing a mask helps prevent the particles from your mouth that contains the virus from spreading and therefore decreases transmission of the coronavirus. Uh, the president will also now be um, kind of uh, spearheading the meetings, the daily meetings and briefings on the virus uh, at five o'clock uh, Eastern. Um, is he doing that for an ulterior motive? You know, Joe, the, the, um, his polls are down. Uh, we're in a surge. He can just tell us why he's doing it. Uh, but I just hope that uh, that he listens to the scientists and allows the experts to speak consistently with one voice and one strong message and that he follows their recommendations and does not contradict them. Joe, this coronavirus is hitting people with respiratory illnesses very hard. People who have been exposed to burn pits are veterans uh, have respiratory illnesses. They're having difficult breathing. If they get sick with coronavirus, they can die like seniors who have respiratory illnesses. That's why I have four bills that are going to be included in, in today's National Defense Authorization Act that will get passed with this bill and eventually will reach it to the president's desk that will help identify veterans who have been exposed to burn pits, get them the appropriate care that they need to, to prevent serious illness or even death, to make sure we expand the registry so we can track them, in addition to fill in the gaps of the scientific research by the Department of Defense. And it's going to be a victory for our veterans. It's going to be a victory for our district. And we need it now more than ever because those veterans who are dying of cancer, who have respiratory illnesses, who have autoimmune diseases, are at especially high risk of dying from COVID-19. Uh, doctor, give us a little bit of history on the burn pits for those who are not familiar with them. 
So bird pits are large pits, sometimes up to 10 acres long, uh, wide, uh, where the military will burn their trash, anything and everything, including jet fuel, plastics, medical waste, uniforms, uh, and computers. And so it, it, it creates this big plume of smoke that can be seen from a, a mile high or a mile away. And then the smoke covers the entire base. And so our, our men and women in uniform are breathing it uh, and it includes carcinogens and other toxins. And we have a, uh, a family who lost uh, a mother, a wife, uh, Jennifer Kebner, who was an Air Force veteran out of Cathedral City, who died of pancreatic cancer due to her exposure to burn pits. The VA, the DOD has been giving our veterans the runaround. I've been holding them down to the truth and uh, and pinning them down to make sure that they address this problem. And I'm not gonna let it go because I made a promise to Jennifer Kepner and, and Ben Kepner and the family and to all the veterans who have been exposed to burn pits that I will fight for them. And these bills that will be uh, uh, passed out of the house today are in addition to previous bills that have become laws already. And so doctor, how does the military get away with these burn pits and no one else can? Well, initially, the, the, uh, the, the topic wasn't really exposed. Uh, in the United States, it is banned to conduct, to burn your trash in open air space because they have found that it contains toxins and, and uh, carcinogens. So what is banned in the U.S. because it's unhealthy for Americans in U.S. soil should be banned in foreign soil because it's still unhealthy for Americans fighting for our freedoms uh, and and defending our nation, and we should give them the same value as we give, and maybe even and and more definitely more uh, than the folks that are living here, because they're out there uh, sacrificing their lives and and their comforts for our benefits. And so that is why we need to stay on top of the VA. We need to stay on top of the Department of Defense. I have um, other bills that are not included with this National Defense Authorization Act that we're pushing. One is called the Jennifer Kepner Hope Act that will open up the health care system to veterans uh, who have been exposed to burn pits uh, for a very nominal fee. Then we have the Veterans Right to Breathe Act, which will give uh, veterans who have been diagnosed with pulmonary illnesses, a presumptive of, of cause from burn pits, so that way they get the benefits uh, and for disability and the death benefits for their widows, uh, and so that we can support them during their hard times and their families uh, as well. All right, doctor, we need to leave it there, but thank you for your time today. Thank you. All right.